Hey everyone, welcome back. AlexJWilson.com here from Remax Wealth Builders Real Estate. And today we're going to look more in depth to why small condos and look at the growth that we foresee in the next 5-10 years in this market and how you can take this unit and leverage it up into your portfolio and use it as your legs that you can stand on. So we're going to start off with a pro forma for a new project by Brad J. Lamb called The Woodsworth. And this building has many investor-friendly condos. And why I say they're investor-friendly is the building focuses on small units. And with small units comes lower costs and it's your entry level asset into the market, which we've discussed before with rising costs, with the stress test. This is a type of asset that individuals on an end user basis are gonna be seeking out. So let's go over the numbers. When we look at the numbers, it really opens your eyes to the value of the small condo. When we look at our example unit at the Woodsworth, we have our junior one bedroom that is 406 square feet. The purchase price on this unit is 494,900. We put a 20% down payment on this and we run our numbers. So the market rent on this unit today is $2,200 per month. If we look at a fixed interest rate of 3.4% and our maintenance fees today would be 247.66 per month. What we get with a smaller condo is lower maintenance fees because we're dealing with less space. And that means less space to maintain and less ownership in the building. So you have a lower contribution of the overall cost of the building. Lower expenses is good for the condo investor. Then we look at our annual property tax because we're buying a lower cost asset. Our property tax is gonna be lower. It's at $3,050 per month. So when we run these numbers, we come just a shade under $2,257 per month for our carrying costs. And what that means is we run a slight cash flow negative situation of just $57 per month. But when we add in our principal payback, so what principal payback is, we, every time we make a mortgage payment, we're paying equity down on the property. That works out to $644 per month our cash flow plus our principal payment is 586.37 per month. So we are in the black. But the thing is, we don't have the property today. We're gonna get this property in the future. We're buying this property off plan. So we're not running a cash flow negative situation. We have to look forward into the future. So when this building is expected to be done, it's expected to be done in 2021. Our average rental increases over the last three years have been over 8% in downtown Toronto. Now, we're not gonna use the 8% number, we're gonna use a more conservative 5% rental growth. So if we're looking at current market rent of today at 2,200, in 2021, our expected rent could be as high as $2,546 per month. That means we are cash flow positive. Our cash flow at that time will be $289 per month. And we still have, remember that principal payback, that number doesn't change, that's still 644 per month. So what does that mean? We have monthly cash flow plus payback of $933 per month. We are in the black. We are in the black on our equity, we are in the black on our cash flow, so flow situation. This is a great situation. Now, let's move farther ahead into the future because real estate is all about holding for the long term. You wanna hold this asset and see long term growth. Now, let's map this out on a full five year period. So, five years from today will be 2023. Well, in 2023, if we're still having 5% per year rental growth, now we're looking at $2,800 per month for rent. 
and our cash flow then increases to $532 per month. We have our average month, uh, monthly principal payback. Now, our monthly cash flow and payback is nearly $1,200 per month. This is great. But let's keep on moving forward. What is this in 10 years? Well, in 10 years, in 2028, we could be looking at potential rent of nearly $3,600 per month on this unit. That means cash flow of over $1,200 per month. An average monthly, and you have your average monthly principal payback as well. So now, with those two numbers combined, we're generating over $1,850 per month of cash flow and principal payback. This is great news for the real estate investor, and this is why we always do things over the long run. Now, it's not just rental growth. We have a growth in our value as well. Our appreciation of our property, our property is going up in value. So, over the last 35 years, we've seen the real estate market increase 6.5% each year over the last 35. So I'm gonna take a very conservative 5% growth per year. So when we look at when we get the condo in 2021, well, we paid 494, 900 for it. In 2021, when we get the property, we could be looking at a value of 572,000, nearly $573,000. Then in five years, we're looking at, in 2023, $631,000. But then in 10 years, this condo could be worth $806,000. And what does that mean? Well, if we look back at our initial investment on the property. And what our initial investment is, is our down payment, which would be 20%, which is our land transfer tax and additional developer costs. All our closing costs together, we're looking at nearly $132,000. Well, in 10 years, with that investment of $132,000, on appreciation alone, we're looking at a return of 211%. Now, when we add on our cash flow and equity pay down over the last 10 years, that return on investment increases to over 300%, 303% on our initial investment. So we get a 300% return three times our money from our initial investment in 2018 when we invested the 131,000 in 2028 this this asset could increase your return on investment could increase by 303%. And the great thing is we're dealing with smaller condos. So we're dealing as I mentioned earlier with lower costs, lower maintenance fees. Also when things increase it's not as big of a shock to the budget. Now we did factor in increases in maintenance fees and property taxes starting in 2022 of 5% increase in maintenance fees per year and a 2% increase in property taxes. But because we're dealing with such low numbers, it's not a shock to your system when these prices increase. And as we discussed in the previous video, with a lack of affordability, and the low vacancy rate in the city of Toronto, the entry level asset, the small condo, is what people are gonna be searching for. Now the key thing to buying the small condo is it, is it builds the foundation of your real estate portfolio. You have these lower cost assets that the rest of your portfolio is gonna stand on. And as they go up in value, you are able to leverage these assets to go buy more assets. And that's where you see true growth in your portfolio and how you get to the next level. I'm gonna take an excerpt from my masterclass in condo investing and I'm gonna show you how I've done this with my own por portfolio. And it's really eye-opening when you leverage your one small condo. Cause I've, I started with small condos before I moved to larger condos. You start with your one small condo and you leverage that and allows you to buy two more condos. You turn one condo into three condos. 
And that's when you start seeing, seeing some really growth and that's when you get to the next level and you continue to expand using that. So take a look at this video, this excerpt from my masterclass in condo investing. Leverage versus debt. So a lot of things that I come across is people go, Alex, you're telling me to, to buy more real estate, that's gonna put me more in debt. And it's not debt, it's leverage. Debt is when you use other people's money to purchase non-income making depreciating assets. That's debt. So that's like if you buy a car you, and you use debt to buy the car, that's, a, that's a, uh, an item that's going down in value um, and it's not making me any money. Leverage is when you use other people's money to purchase income making assets. So if I do a line of credit off my home to purchase a piece of real estate, I'm using other people's money, the bank, my, bank's money, to, to buy into something that's going to make me money. I'm using leverage to help me get ahead. And we're going to show examples of how you use leverage to get ahead personally. I'm always looking for the Goldilocks method. I just coined the term, maybe it's out there as well, I don't know. And this is all about cash flow management. So if you have too much positive cash flow, it's all going to get taxed away. You could have increased equity in the property to purchase more investment units. So what I mean by that is, again, if I have that one condo unit, and in five years, I still have one condo unit, and if I'm making $300 a month from that one condo unit, well, I'm doing okay, but what if I, what if I tapped in the equity of the property, decreased my cash flow to a zero cash flow model, and then bought another condo unit, so then at the end of five years, I have two condo units instead of one, and I'm gonna go over an example to show how valuable that is. And then you want too much negative cash flow, it exposes you to risk. If we're not able to maintain our monthly obligations, we put ourselves in a situation where we have to sell. And we never want to put ourselves in a situation where we have to sell. That's when you lose money in real estate. You want to focus on neutral cash flow, which minimizes our taxable rental income and efficiently uses equity by maximizing the number of investment properties we own that are appreciating in value and have their equity paid down. It's like Monopoly. I use my Baltic Avenue, my very first Monopoly piece, to work my way around the board. I don't buy Park Place first, I work my way around the board to get to Park Place. So that's what you want to do with your properties. Use your Baltic Avenue, use that first property to help yourself work around the board and you literally play real life Monopoly. Okay, so now I wanted to show you how I can turn one condo into three condos. And this is a case study. So my first investment condo I bought for $262,400. The current market value in that condo was $500,000. The current mortgage on that condo was $202,000. The market rental rate on that condo is $2,100 per month. So what I can do is I can refinance equity out of that property and reinvest it. So I can get an 80% loan to value from the bank. That means I have $400,000 of refinancing available. That refinance amount, I take that 400,000, I subtract my current mortgage of 202, and that allows me a available equity to reinvest of $197,000. So what do I do? I don't go and put it to, it becomes debt if I take that and I put that into non-appreciating assets. I take that money and I buy more real estate. So what I did is I used that 197,812 to buy two pre-construction condos. So in 2016, I bought a condo at 75 the Esplanade, and in 2017, I bought a condo at Canary Block, and those deposits equaled $175,000. Um, the current market value on those, I bought one for 380. The current market value of that is 483. Uh, the other one I bought for 578. The current market value of that is 750. So my total gain, the difference between that, is $320,000. So to turn a, the, the current appreciation of those two condos is $320,000. So by using that equity in the first condo and putting in two other properties, I gained another $320,000 of appreciation. But if I did nothing, I wouldn't have got that. So what happened? Now this is, where, this is where things get crazy. What happens over the next five years? So let's assume a conservative 5% annual compound and growth. And to put that in perspective, the average rate of appreciation of the downtown Toronto condos is nine, has been 9.4% over the last five years. So I take my Canary condo, in five years, that'll be worth $638,000. Yeah. 
So I left my original mortgage. My gain is two hundred eighty-two thousand. Seventy-five decimal odd by 2023. That's going to be worth six hundred and sixteen thousand for another gain of one hundred and thirty-three thousand. And my Canary Block property, um, its value will be nine hundred and fifty-seven thousand. That's a gain of another two hundred and seven thousand. So a total gain from twenty-eight to, from uh, twenty eighteen to twenty twenty-three is six hundred and twelve thousand dollars. So the res what's the result of me maximizing my portfolio? The leverage equity of one condo, 197000 Turn that leverage equity into two condos. Current appreciation of that is $320,000. Then at the end of the five years, at a 5% annual compound of growth rate of those three properties, my total gain from leveraging my one condo is $943,000. It sounds crazy, but it happens. Now, a few notes to those first-time investors out there when you're starting out. Condos are a fantastic investment because they truly are hands-off. Unlike a multiplex property, which can have a number of its own headaches, these condos are located in large buildings which are managed by large professional corporations. And you're dealing with wealthier individuals that are going to be renting out these units, truly AAA caliber individuals. So you're not worried about missed rental payments. They are nearly 100% hands-off as opposed to purchasing that larger asset. Another very important thing is these are liquid assets. So that goes to the value of your smaller units. And what I mean by liquid is that if I owned a larger building, if I wanted to realize return on that larger building and I have to sell the whole building and I'm completely out of the game, with a smaller condo unit, I'm selling that smaller condo unit to most likely an end user in the future. And that means there's emotion attached because this is going to be an individual's home. Their numbers don't have to make your traditional investment sense that you need when you're buying your property. They don't need to be cash flow positive. They just need a roof over their heads. So we see end users, which are going to buy, pay a premium the end of the life cycle of the investment was the end user is going to pay a premium to live in this unit, which is going to lead to a higher sales value for you and a greater return. But with a multi-residential property, I'm not going to have that. I'm going to have to sell to another investor. It's not going to be an end user. So we take emotions out of it and we're just doing, dealing with the numbers. So I'm not going to see as high of a sales price as the emotional individual that's buying their first home because they need a roof over their head. And we get into the, the entry level in, in product because that is the roofs that young professionals, the people making their money that can't make that jump into home ownership yet are going to be looking for. And when they go to buy their first properties, entry level properties, and these are the entry level properties that they're going to be looking towards buying wise. How can they get their footprint on the market? They're going to go for the lowest cost asset out there, which is that entry level condo, that studio, that junior one bedroom, because that is all they can initially afford. So that's what you want to move towards because that's going to see the, the greatest growth in the market. And there are some investors that are scared of these smaller units, which offers more opportunity for you as a first time investor to go after these smaller units because these are what? people will be able to afford in the future. And that will lead to a higher growth rate in these smaller units. Now, if you're ready to make that next step to start investing, send me an email and give you a call and we can book a consultation to move yourself forward to get you that first small investment condo, which you can build that foundation on to leverage growth and turn you into a condo millionaire. From AlexJWilson.com and Remax Wealth Builders Real Estate, we want to see you grow generational wealth, retire early, and set yourself up for the future so you can make choices. Send me an email. Now, if you're ready to make the next step and start investing and building that portfolio, send me an email. Give me a call. We'll book a consultation and we'll show you how you can secure your first 
small condo unit as an investment, which we will build your foundation on and build a plan so you can become a condo millionaire and grow a real estate portfolio just like mine. From alexjwilson.com and everyone at Remax Wealth Builders Real Estate, we want to see you grow generational wealth, retire early, so that you can make the choices with what you want to do. Talk soon. Bye-bye.